big finish for the love of stories. How doth the little butterfly embold its see-through wings to suck upon a nectary a drink for gods and kings? <laughs> That's your nectar fully topped up. Now then, where are you all? I can only see bees. Oh, where did you come from, you sneaky little thing? Oh, goodness. So many of you. Dr. Andrews, got your message. What's the emergency? Uh, sorry to trouble you, Dr. Grange. I couldn't get through to the pollination project team. As you can see, all of last week's butterflies have disappeared. And there are caterpillars everywhere. This is Greenhouse D, and we're not supposed to have any changes to D for a week. How odd. I also checked on A, B and C. Yes. How very good of you. And they're empty. Except for the bees, of course, and, and more caterpillars. Greenhouse C was full of chrysalises last week, but they're gone. Is someone taking them away? Why would you think that? Well, I took a phone call this morning from a cryo courier about a recent pickup. Oh, the seed bank team are always using cryo couriers. It was probably a marketing call. Ah, but this all seems very strange. I just can't think why there are caterpillars all over the floor. I'd say it's a prank, but... They do seem agitated, don't they? Perhaps we ought to examine one. <laughs> oh, I've left my glasses in my office. Would you pick one up for me? Oh, uh, of course. Um, right. Come here. That's it. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. We do advise wearing gloves. Oh! She bit me! That, that is quite a sting! Unusual. Can you blame her? She had no choice. What kind of caterpillars are these? It, uh, this, oh! Oh! Oh, head rush. Stood up a little too quickly. Oh, my head, I... Oh! Perhaps you ought to sit down. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Look at you. I do believe that's a youthful glow I'm seeing. Oh, I, I need... Your skin. Wrinkles just rippling away. You've never looked better. Ah, there you go. Oh, what's happening? Youth. Every cell in your body has received a new instruction to retrace its steps, if you like. Look at that full head of hair. What? Oh, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you. What is this? At last. And all the way back you go. My glasses. Help me. Please, help me. Help me! I'm sorry, but there's so very much at stake.
All right, Sergeant. Certainly more impressive inside. Uh, we can't be too conspicuous outside, ma. I like how the theater on the left and the language school on the right uh, draw the eye away from. The most neglected building in central London. Uh, thankfully, it's only neglected on the outside. Down there is the canteen, open 24-7. Coffee is uh, better than expected. Fish and chips on Fridays, and uh, it's all subsidized. The promised land. This is the elevator that takes you to the gym on the top floor. It's fully open now? Oh, yes. Even the pool and the clandestine roof garden. Not conspicuous at all. Mirror trellises, ma. The main briefing room right ahead. And everything has been installed on the second floor as we discussed? HR, archives, weapons. And the firing range is set up? Already in use. Level minus three. All soundproofed. And in there? And the printer. Ma. It's huge. Is that all it does? No, ma. And through here is the control center. I see. As you were. That's the telephone surveillance team listening out for any keywords on 999 calls. Over there is the computer genius team. I, uh, I don't think they like me. The Unified Intelligence Desk Force, eh? Not everyone is suited to hand to hand in the Niger. The Zambezi, Sergeant. Ah, yes, ma. If you'd like to make your way up to the second floor, I've booked you the main meeting room for the day for all your uh, meet and greets. Shame. But there are, uh, how do you say, uh, biscuits. Does it have to be all day? And tomorrow. Introductions. Uh, Spare me. I. Carry nine to Seabird 2. Are you with the Brigadier? Over. Seabird 2 here. Affirmative. Over. Urgent call for Motion equity through. Over. Control room, please. Extension 12. Over. Uh, you can take it here. Bambera! Hello. My name is Louise Ricks. I was supposed to have an 11 a.m. with you this morning, but something's happened. Oh, good. A cancellation. There's been an incident at the CSRF. The where? CSRF. Caverhurst Seed Bank and Research Facility. It's in Hampshire. Never heard of it. Lots of sensitive research into flora and biodiversity. There's this guy who's gone missing and this morning a fatality, both working on the same project. Who did you say you were? Dr. Louise Ricks. Central Control appointed me your new scientific advisor. And how am I supposed to know that the person I'm speaking to is actually Dr. Louise Ricks? Uh, Louise Ricks is on your meeting list. Uh, I mean, if it is her. I can't help you with that, but the team put me through to you, so it was good enough for them. Why are you down at that facility rather than here? I came down to collect a project file and see what's going on, but the site manager made everyone exit the building. I'm just at the payphone outside. You need to get down here now. Firstly, you don't tell me what I need. Secondly, I am not, and never have been, a fan of excitable doctors. There isn't time for this. I'm telling you, something's up. Oh, damn, look, security are coming over. This man, Dr. Grange, he'd let you in. You'd have to, his unit comes from the research here. All right, come hey, on. Hey, no, get, come get, on off, me. get off me. Get out. Ricks. No, I have a right to be here, you can't. What the? Sergeant. Have you heard of this Caverhurst place? CSRF? She said it was a seed bank or something. Uh, let's talk to the desk force. Oh, finally. You're my scientific advisor, for Pete's sake. Are you expecting a twitchy little man with a clipboard? Glad to disappoint you. I was expecting a professional front. Not a soldier. I can see that. This is Sergeant Savrine, my second in command. Hi. Are you hurt, daughter? Nearly lost a leg kicking the panel out of that payphone. Thugs threw me off the premises. Hopefully now you're here, they'll have to let me back in. What are you actually doing here? I told you. All I've heard is speculation and fear-mongering from a trespasser who's already been removed from the premises once. I want evidence and explanations or we're leaving. It's the chat rooms. The what? Internet chat rooms where the staff talk to each other online. I have a login just to keep an eye on things. Technically, it's, it's part of the job, a bit. So you're a spy as well? Might at least come in handy. 
I logged in to see what people were saying about Dr. Barnaby Andrews, the man reported missing two days ago. They all suspect something. And when I got here this morning, some staff were in tears because they'd just seen a research student die. Amy Flynn, she was working on the same project. You know what happened to her? No, they couldn't put it into words. They had that look. What look? The one people get when they can't process what they've seen because it's incompatible with their reality. Something impossible, something terrible, something otherworldly. <sighs> Let's walk. These chat rooms, another place for gossip? These people aren't like that. They work with plants and seed samples. But they said this pollination project has run for years, years longer than it was supposed to. Dr. Andrews would never abandon it, they said. Are the police here? No, that's the thing. He shut down the place with himself inside. Who did? The site manager, Dr. Grange. He said it's in quarantine. Quarantine? It's the largest flora genome editing hub in Europe. It'd be protocol, but I think something has happened that he doesn't want people to see. And he's still here? Yep. Right. I'll talk to security, and then we can find this Dr. Grange and ask a few questions. But I sincerely hope we don't have to leave with egg on our faces. See? Knew they'd be fine with a brigadier. Have you considered your appearance might be hampering your credibility? Well, my mistake. I left my tweed suit at the dry cleaners in 1962. Oh, oh, Excuse me? Ah, security, let me know you were insisting on coming. We asked that everyone leave the facility until we could ascertain... I believe we can help with that. Are you Dr. Grange? That's him. I am. Head botanist and site manager. I'm afraid we're in a fix, as this work is all very sensitive. I must ask you to leave. Well, we're from a unit, and we're used to dealing with sensitive or out of the ordinary incidents. Mm, security did mention that. I told you this before. I'm handling this. No, it's all right, she did. But I was in the middle of investigating an alarm at the time, plus reports of an incident. A strange face made me all the more anxious to shut everything down, as I'm sure you will understand. We do. And I'm afraid to say I didn't believe she was a scientist. Curious. In any case, it all appears to be a false alarm. So what happened? All stuff and nonsense, really. Someone triggered a quarantine alert, but I haven't found anything to suggest there's a problem, nor can I find whoever initiated the alert. It may have been trapped in error. So there is no quarantine? We are safe? We are a seed bank. We ensure the preservation of biodiversity. In the event of catastrophe, our library of seeds may be the only insurance for the continuation of the human race, our future food. Quarantine is there to protect the seed bank, not staff or visitors. What about Amy Flynn? Witnesses said they saw her death. People have been on tenterhooks since Dr. Andrews didn't turn up for work. This is the man who's gone missing? Yes, it's awful. They're planning on dragging the river today. Understandably, emotions are running high, but imaginations are running wild. Miss Flynn herself is nowhere to be seen. But because she was working with Dr. Andrews, people are leaping to conclusions. She may have simply gone out for some fresh air, upset at what is, I'm afraid to say, likely Dr. Andrews' suicide. What makes you say that? All I know is he appeared to be under considerable strain. He worked in genetic modification, and his experimental nectar is a failure. They pulled the funding recently. It's crushing for him. The pollination experiment? Yes. You know about that? Yeah, I heard about it. Sad business when these projects come to nothing. But in any case, I think you've had a wasted journey. I see. We're very undramatic here, you know, in reality. I'm sure Miss Flynn will turn up sooner or later. Well, thank you for your time. Forgive the intrusion. Where was Amy last seen? For goodness sake! In the subterranean greenhouses. We have 20 in the basement for various controlled studies. The pollination project has been running over six of them. We need to take a look. Rix, that's enough. Uh, no, no, that ought to be fine. You'll find the studies in E and F. Let me know if Miss Flynn reappears. I have some calls to make, but I'll be in my office if you need anything. Thank you, Dr. Grange. 
What exactly are you expecting to find? You weren't here. You didn't see their faces. They saw something dreadful happen, and I think it's connected to this synthetic nectar or whatever they've done. All right. We look, but then we leave. It's uh, like a campsite with glass tents. I thought greenhouses needed sunlight. Controlled environment agriculture. Experiments needing precise temperatures, humidity, solar absorption, light, dark, radiation, so conditions can be reproduced exactly. Are the insects are real, though? Yes, they will be. Most of the projects are concerned with ecological balance. A bit worrying if they've got out. Caterpillars, lots of them! Here we are, A to D, empty, looks like. E and F, these are the ones. You're not supposed to go in, just look through the observation window. Flowers. So many. Yep, greenhouse E, genetically modified nectar, a synthetic pheromone to encourage pollination in different pollinators. Can we go in? It might destabilize the environmental conditions. What? If you open the oven door too early, the cake collapses. Oh, it's like a zoo. A flower zoo. This is a lot of flowers. I think these caterpillars want to get to the flowers. They certainly seem keen. I've got one on my boot. Oh, get off. Why are they so frisky? What about in there? Greenhouse F, sample three, speed of efficacy. Looks like they're examining how quickly changes take place. Fast and slow release. Oh, bees. I can't see any. Up in the corner. Up there, a clump. Uh, they don't seem interested in the flowers. It's not just bees, it's butterflies too, according to this form. I can't see them though. A camouflage. Le papillon est une fleur qui vole. La fleur, un papillon fils. What? The butterfly is a flying flower, the flower a tethered butterfly. Ponce de Nio Chalibron, a French poet. Thank you, Sergeant. Well, where are the butterflies? Good question. Lots of caterpillars, no butterflies. And the bees are keeping well away, look at them. It's like they know something's up. Oh, come on. No, really, they're cowering from something. I mean, what's on the other side of the- That, there. Is that a pile of clothes? Oh, that might be Amy. Right. We need to take a look. Unlock the door. No. I beg your pardon? Something's wrong in there. This behavior is wrong. We need to work out why the bees are scared. You brought me down here because a woman is missing. We need to be careful. No one should go in there. Ooh, get off. Oh, no, I've got caterpillar on the farm. Ma'am. For all we know, Amy could still be in there, maybe unconscious. We can't tell from here. It's a camera. What? Up there. What the bees are clinging to as if it is home. It's a camera. Uh, we can't see it for the bees, but there is a little red light just there, underneath the swarm. Of course, they would have been filming the experiment. I know where the office is, we can review the tape. Amy would probably have been changing the tapes. Looks like this one is full, but... There. Twelve minutes past eight. Butterflies. Yeah, lots of them. And there's Amy. She's injecting the synthetic nectar into the flowers. And then she leaves. The butterflies seem to like it. The bees don't. Uh, did you know they uh, taste with their feet, the butterflies? No, I did not, Sergeant. Fast forward. Pause it. Those hanging bright green things, they weren't there a moment ago. Chrysalises. No way, they've gone back into their cocoons. They're turning back into caterpillars, but th that's the wrong way round. And now little eggs all over. And now, gone. Where's Flynn? You mean Amy? There! She looks confused. She's looking for the butterflies. Are those more cocoons and more caterpillars? It's like watching life backwards. Perhaps it's a video trick. Oh, hell. I think I know what this is. What they've done. Did it just bite her? Oh, no. Uh, are they poisonous? Some kind of allergic reaction? No, it's not that. She's... It, it looks like she's getting smaller. She is getting smaller. Backwards, like the butterflies. Oh, come on. No, she is. She's unborn. Oh, I'm sorry, Amy. Where is she? We need to get her. She's gone. 
it reversed her into nothing, like we saw with the butterflies, and if we go in there, that could happen to us. How can something disappear into nothing? The same way we grow from nothing, same way the universe wasn't there until it went bang. C'est impossible. Not impossible. There was this research paper years ago about an experimental genetic treatment that could rewind cells, reverse the growth of cancerous tumors. The theory was that DNA could be rewritten with the instructions for growth in reverse. The paper was laughed at by the scientific community. Why would they laugh at the cure for cancer? Because the paper wasn't grounded in established science. It was famous in the 80s for being taught to students as a guide in how not to write a scientific paper. Well, it looks like it's come on a bit since then. There was a developing mathematical theory that, if completed, would have spelled out how to rewind the biological clocks of all living cells. And no one thought that might be a problem. No one thought it would be completed. Not ever. We live with an incomplete standard model of physics. Finding just a piece of that puzzle is the discovery of a lifetime. If this is what I think it is, the implications for controlling the direction of life, for manipulating matter, are unthinkable. And you think the DNA of these butterflies has been changed to instruct cells to go backwards rather than forwards? Yeah, I do. Caverhurst, Winston Grange? Ah, yes. Thank you for returning my call. No, I can assure you the seed bank vaults are 100% safe, built to survive anything. S sorry? No, it's the research center and those mucky experiments. Yes, that's right. <laughs> no one in or out for 48 hours now, until it's safe. This project was just supposed to be about enhancing nectar to promote pollination. I think the rewind experiment may have been using it as a cover. Look there, screen six, that's a live feed for Greenhouse F. But the butterflies are fine in there. Bees still hiding in a corner, up there by the door. Bees can warn each other. The taster bee will warn the other bees with a little dance. That's how the bees know the nectar is poisoned and why they're staying away. The butterflies have no such form of communication. Too busy being treasure lead to pass on a warning. Here, according to the file, there are supposed to be 150 butterflies in here. I, I can only see a dozen, if that. Uh, on the floor. Caterpillars, many of them. Ugh, critters. Uh, killer critters. But why aren't they going back into nothing? Uh... It looks like each greenhouse is testing the nectar with different modifications, potency, timing. So there's significant variance in how it takes and when. Mom. It's also possible the chrysalis stage stabilizes the effects of the nectar, so those caterpillars carry the rewind instruction but don't rewind further themselves. So if they get out, they could enter the food chain. Birds, bats, mice. Cats. Mum. What? Uh, the critters. Uh, they followed us. They're rolling together. Rolling swarms. They move much faster in a pack. But we have to assume these caterpillars have all fed on that nectar. Don't let them touch you. Great idea coming down here, Rix. I didn't know. Sergeant, call HQ and get back up. We need proper quarantine here now. To stop these things? To stop anything from getting out, whether it's crawling or flying or doing cartwheels. Can you put the flies up of things like the ones in chip shops? Sergeant, urgent, <laughs> level one containment. Yes, ma'am, right away. Let's get out of here. Looks like you were right about the project. Yeah, I wish I wasn't. His office is up here. Yes. Ladies, I heard a commotion. I have questions. Are they following us? They'll get everywhere. I think they've been bred to seek out life to bite. Watch the air vents. What on earth has happened? You said there was no need for quarantine, and yet the greenhouses are overrun with dangerous caterpillars. Swarms of them. The caterpillars? Dangerous? We saw it. We checked the video footage from the greenhouse. Ah, I wasn't aware it was working. Miss Flynn must have fixed the link. It was broken? So she said. Do you know what happened to Miss Flynn? Those caterpillars bite, and whatever they bite is killed. And there are thousands of them. Forming rolling swarms like caterpillar travelators will be knee deep in them within the hour. We need to evacuate and firebomb. No, absolutely not. I can't allow that. We are a conservation facility preserving billions of seeds from around the world. 
If those caterpillars get out, they won't just kill, they could erase the biodiversity you care so much about. Then what do we do? I need access to Dr. Andrew's computer files. Now. Uh, I'll take you to his office. I wish you luck, however. Dr. Andrews was a stickler for security. Mom, Seabird 2 here. I take it the containment cage has arrived. Yeah, all seven tons of it. Uh, the panels are locking into place now. Uh, okay. Uh, now it is coming down, Mom, so please prepare to lose some light until we power it up. Uh, the generators are ready, so we'll have it electrified in uh, a few minutes. Over. Good. Make sure we have troops on both sides. If just one of those things gets out, we're in trouble, over. Yes, Mom. I hate these things. No legs, too many legs, too many eyes. Bug hunt, Sergeant. A unit privilege. Yes, Mom. Right. All secured? Yes? Okay. Activate the containment cage. Très bien. Uh, uh, this is impressive. Wow, now I know how spiders feel when we put cups over them. How do we get out? We can get out, can't we? There's an exit and vestibule area which isn't electrified. And I've instructed them to use flamethrowers. They're getting livelier. Any luck? Dr. Grange is trying to contact the project funder. I found Dr. Andrew's login details on a piece of paper under his keyboard, and loads more passwords written inside this old book. Not exactly high tech. DNA, the way we grow by M. Gower, 1979. That text was out of date when I was at school. How does he work in this jungle? More like a greenhouse than an office. Botanists. Speaking of, I found Barnaby Andrews' daily log. He's been scanning in all his paperwork, even his handwritten notes. Ordinary nectar is being sent here in huge batches and stored downstairs. The resequence code is being added in this computer program called AMRAC, which updates the nectar at the push of a button. Seriously advanced programming, but I can only find the surface level modifications on this computer. Tweaks to taste, probably to tempt the bees. God, I need the base resequence code. Resequence code? The resequence DNA. It definitely isn't here. I don't think Dr. Andrews understood what he was doing. Hey! Ugh. Raining caterpillars, it just gets better. You got a few that time. Well, it seems this book hasn't completely outlived its usefulness. Can't you replace the modified nectar with normal nectar? The nectar is just like a Trojan horse. The resequence code invades the nectar like a computer virus. It copies and pastes, cause and effect the wrong way round. Baby to adult becomes adult to baby, back to nothing. This instruction has the capacity to erase anything with DNA. An undo instruction for creation. Oh, and it's coming up the stairs. Why aren't they stopping then? My troops! Those swarms are like truck tires. I'm firebombing this place. Wait, Dr. Andrew's notes, the empty greenhouses, the cocoons were moved, 500 of them. So hundreds of those things are already on the outside and just became a bioweapon that can reverse people into nothing. It's too late. We need to get you somewhere safer. This computer sends all coding updates to the Nectar downstairs from the AMRAC program. I don't fancy disconnecting all these cables and sensors even if there was time. It's not going anywhere, so neither am I. But you can use this computer to correct the DNA. If we can find the project file and the code. Um, look at this. A registration number scribbled next to... Oh, what does that say? Truck, 5 a.m. Break the swarms! Seabird 1 to Seabird 2. Coming, over. Seabird 2, Mum. I need you to run a registration number. This science is far too advanced for civilian research. We need an antidote. That's impossible without the resequencing code. Find a way to reverse this. That's an order. It doesn't matter if it's a royal decree. I can't do anything without the code. Ricks! It's like asking me to write a symphony backwards when there's no sheet music and I've only heard a few notes. This science has taken decades. I can't just rustle it up. 
Get that machine ready. Get that program ready. Figure out what you can, so as soon as I find that code, which I will, we don't waste another second. Do it! Mom? Go ahead! The vehicle belongs to a company called Highfield Tech, a cryogenic storage facility. Sounds like the cocoons might have gone there. Where is it? Uh, ship. Ten minutes away. We go there now. Ricks, get to it. Keep an eye out for Dr. Grange. I think he's still here somewhere and he shouldn't be. Yeah, I'll just quickly rearrange the building blocks of life while babysitting an old man, given I'm omnipotent. Watch the back talk. Put on these gloves and keep your skin covered. No pressure or anything. <sighs> Check for insects in case we miss them. Collars, hats, boots, sleeves. Scientists. Not sure why they join the unit if they're not going to respect the chain of command. A law unto themselves. May we? If anyone can be taught the chain of command, scientific skill is very rare. We're clear. Let's go. I hope you are all right, my dear. Oh, well, it's not safe in here. You should leave. The test control is downstairs, throwing fire around my facility. I'm not leaving it like this. These creatures won't bother you if you ignore them. Fine. I did promise Dr. Andrews I'd water his plants if ever he was away. <sighs> they prefer a certain level of humidity, and I notice they are quite parched. I see you've connected to the internet. You know your way around a computer. Very good. And your brigadier? Impressive woman. Left you here alone, has she? He's not due in sight until next week, Gary. All right. Bye. Brigadier Winifred Bamberin, this is my second in command, Sergeant Jean-Paul Savrine. I'd like to have a word with whoever's in charge. Well, that's me, Sylvia Brooks, Operations Manager. I manage the day-to-day -day here at Tyfield Tech. Then there's Chris, but he's away on holiday. Last minute, off he went. We're here to seize biological materials that we believe are being held here illegally under the guise of medical research. Oh, what shipment? From CSRF. Oh, well, we have a lot of business with them. Would they have been on Tuesday during antisocial hours? This is the registration. Well, the products have to be frozen at all hours. Let's see. Oh, that's Dave's truck. Yeah, he brought something in, early doors, Tuesday. I need to see where the shipment would have been taken. It's in the back warehouse, that lot. Well, I can't let you in. It's all secure. We've all signed things. You are storing a biological weapon in that warehouse. If you obstruct us in any way, I will call the police to have you arrested and everything on the site destroyed as a precaution. Alternatively, you can take us to the shipment concerned and we can contain this threat together. It's this way. Ugh. Oh, they keep dropping on me. Keep your collar up as I have. They may bite if they get trapped. It's all right. You focus on that. I'll keep them away from you. Oh, nice one, Louise. What are you a doctor of? Not a medical doctor. I have a medical degree, but no, I'm a scientist like you. <laughs> but not like me. A modern scientist who is learning in a digital world. I had no such advantage. The things you'll do my wife was a scientist. Marjorie. She used to talk about the things she could have done in a kinder world. Oh. Marjorie Gower. Yes, yeah, she wrote this book. You have our research paper on your screen. I studied it at uni. The cancer code. I had no idea it was you. To reverse how DNA exists in time. Rewinding how it expresses and mutates and instructs with vast implications for defeating illnesses and even aging. 
the work of a god. Or a couple of botanists. They wouldn't let you mess with human DNA. But butterflies are a brilliant choice. Their metamorphosis would make the rewind effect so much more apparent. Exactly. You see it makes sense, and you see its beauty. Get off. She worked with you? Marjorie? Yes. Right up until the end. I'm sorry. I know this started because you were searching for a cure. It didn't begin with her, and it won't end with her. Millions of people need a cure. That's the point. God. There's a swarm outside, and I didn't notice before. Chrysalises, hanging on the plants. My monarch butterflies. Increasingly rare in the UK. Will they be butterflies or caterpillars? Oh, butterflies. I had time to really get it right, you see. You used the pupae stage to stabilize them. And now you have flying weapons. Exactly. Marjorie would have liked you. When these emerge, they will carry the rewind instruction like bees scattering pollen. Everything they touch will be reversed. Even the grass. That's what you wanted the bees to do? Yes. But bees have altogether too much free will and wouldn't cooperate. Marjorie would have found that ever so funny. And those 500 chrysalises that were taken away? My butterflies. Frozen and stored. I balanced out the rewind instruction with a growth instruction. The creatures are in a time loop of metamorphosis and cellular renewal. I'm not completely sure that even a deep freeze can slow them down. So, you have no knowledge of what's in trucks that come to your company? Of course I do. This one is out of the ordinary, but we're the go-to cryo company for university projects, medical research programs, you name it. We have to know what we're dealing with to provide the right service. What other stuff do you keep here? Any project information? Project files. We do keep some records on site for reference, in case of any issues. I'm fully trained on the Data Protection Act. Did a test. No papers left on desks and that. Unit 17-18-630. There. Them two. Right. What are you going to do? Cryopreservation is very sensitive. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of those. Hundreds. Trays and trays. Uh. How can that one be moving? They're frozen at minus 80 degrees. Look out! Down! Close it! Don't let it touch you! It's deadly! But it's a butterfly! It's going for that plant on the windowsill! Hey, uh, hey, it's too big! Uh. Where'd the plant go? It disappeared! The butterfly erased it. That's what it does! Uh. But there's hundreds of them! Uh. Uh. What's wrong with it? Uh. Where is it? Up there. Top of the filing cabinet. Get down from there! <sighs> Mom, I think we should maybe not make the butterfly of death angry. <sighs> Flawless plan. We're surrounded by insects that can delete us. We are evolution understanding itself. I thought you would appreciate that. And now, the superlative. Here come the monarchs. Or one, at least. The others won't be far behind. Oh, look at that beautiful wing unfurl. A tribute to creation. It's, it's huge. Why did you breed them like that? Side effects, perhaps, but beautiful. Oh. 
Stay Sunday! Got it. <sighs> Tell me it's dead! Don't touch any part of it. It's so big. Makes them easier to hit, at least. The specimens need to all be destroyed immediately. And let's not let any more out. Yes, ma'am. What are you doing? This is the plug. She'll put us out of business. Sergeant, stay here and guard the freezers. Call it in. Incineration. We need to ensure everything is disposed of. Yes, ma'am. Seabird 2 to Erie 9. Over. Miss Brooks, I need to see your files. Now. Invoices are in here. Project stuff usually in the boxes. The University of Sherbourne. Clarice Institute. These are all medical projects. This one looks new. No dust. Just says M. I didn't put that one there. I found your invoice. Coverhurst. Non-disclosure. Purchase order. Wait! The effect of synthetic pheromone on foraging behavior and pollen collection. The pollination project. But underneath... Oh! This has to be it. It's like a phone book. Does that look like a whole lot of genetic code to you? Oh! There you are. Bet they made a backup on that disc. Amrak. W.G. Same initials on the invoice. W.G. Seabird 1 to Seabird 2. Come in, over. Seabird 2 receiving, over. It's Grange. It's all his work. We need to get back to Rick's. What's happening with the freezers? Death by fire and ice, ma'am. All contained. I'll start the car. Very good, Sergeant. <laughs> Sergeant! No! Clear! Rex! Are you in there? Rex! More over there! Get in quick! Project file, and there's a disc. No rush. And where's... Grange, what did you do to him? What did I do to him? He set one of his mutant butterflies on me, but it dropped like a rock before it could reach me. It's too big to fly. Uh, uh, he's out cold. I knocked him out with his wife's brick of a book and tied him up with a couple of cables. Reprobate. Uh, this happened to us, yeah, these big ones. Did you get them all? Destroyed. You can do it now, right? Put the corrected DNA into the nectar. Here's hoping. I was thinking. Can you get the bees to forage for it and send them out to spread the rewind instruction? I had the same thought. I... Look out! Oh, 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 oh uh, nearly lost a hand. You nearly lost more than that. Thank you. There are more. Uh, I'll hold them off. Rick! I know. Okay, the program is reading it. This guy really puts the genius in evil genius. That's it. Okay, come on. If you can add, you can take away. Just undo. Undo, please. No, okay, where are the markers? Locate okay, the markers. Too many! No time! Not in dear off. Come on. It can't be that simple, can it? Find and replace, have the quick release, and a spoonful of sugar. Seriously? Mum, please, get behind me! Shut up! Hit them! Hit everything! Yes, ma'am. It's done. The next has been updated. We have to get it into the flowers. Downstairs? Cover her! Let's go! How do you know the bees will try this nectar? The flowers send an electric charge that bees can't resist. Come on, charge flowers. Sugary liquid. Yum yum. Save the world quickly. It's working. Right, now we open the door and let them fly. Fly! The 
They're getting sleepy. That's a good sign. This means they're entering the pupae stage. And then we're back to butterflies and the natural order of things. We know it works. That's the main thing. And as for this lot, it'll be quite the tidy up operation. Sergeant, let's check on Grange. He's awake. Oh, they're more interested in the nectar than me. Blast you. Why are you after me? Maybe it remembers you spiking its drink. So what happens now? Prison. I only thought of the science that could save millions of lives. This experiment is illegal, could... unethical, criminal. You've tried to break nature. Nature isn't ethical. It's predatory. Mankind has learned to harness most everything on this hostile planet except our inner nature. That has to be our next step as a species. So you found a way to rewind life. I only meant to rewind cancerous cells, but I unlocked something else. It cannot be undiscovered, only refined. There is an unpredictable variance in response, some quick, some slow. I guess that nature rebelled at your concoction. You may be right. I didn't know what I had, only that it should be protected like any other incredible discovery. The power to pollinate the Earth with an undo instruction. What would you undo, huh, Brigadier? And you too? Imagine the things we could do. But like any weaponry, where does it end? Not a weapon, a tool. I saw an opportunity. I do not like where we are heading so short-sighted. I'm older than you. I can tell when we're about to repeat a chapter. If you delete the lesson, no one learns. One lesson is never meaningful from one generation to the next. It has to be lived over and over again. All our karma. Oh, oh don't roll your eyes at me, Brigadier. Karma is merely the Sanskrit word for the law of cause and effect. And I found a way to reverse it. Effect to cause. Amrak, your computer program. Amrak is karma backwards. Imagine if we could wipe a slate clean and try again. Maybe there's a version of reality where we get it right. We get the cards we're dealt and no more. You had your chance and you chose to develop a weapon. Tools are constructive, not destructive. Deleting can be very constructive in a rewrite. We have to go back to a point in time before we were set on our current course. You know very well that destruction is inevitable if we carry on as we are. We can all sense it. No, no, I cannot. Neither can I. But you can, Brigadier. You know the world. You know how people are. You've seen enough. No, I haven't. And I've seen more than you. The moment you think you've seen enough is the moment you give up. You shut down. It's a way of dying. I prefer to keep fighting. Oh, children. Enjoy your gallant hope for as long as you can. But take care of her. Who? Marjorie. I named the resequence code after the good lady wife. She's in every particle of this. Use her as you will. I know the time will come when you'll consider it. It won't. Marjorie will be destroyed. I so hoped you'd see the immensity of what I have achieved. But you people always reduce everything to monsters. Here, little one. Caterpillar! The bees missed it. Mind! Poor thing. It's not your fault. It's just your nature. Ah! It got him. Ah. Get back! Uh, uh, Where did it go? Uh, oh, I suppose it makes sense. Agony is guaranteed for all, Brigadier, and eventually oblivion. <gasps> oh, spine is twisted up. <gasps> Gone. Karma. Coward. The caterpillar! <clears throat> Got it. Got it. C'est fini.
Well, this is a bit flash. First coffee machine that hasn't let me down. Uh, merci bon. That for English coffee? It'll do. Nothing impresses you, does it? These things need to be earned. Which reminds me. A radio for you. So you can let us know next time you're in mortal danger and confronting a mass murderer single-handed. Brilliant. I can be a seabird now. Well, or an eerie call sign. Eerie one is free, I believe. Thanks. The eerie one suits me down to the ground. It's not a toy. Nope. No fun detected. <sighs> oh, sure. Uh, what shall we do with this deleting DNA? Delete it? No. Some other mad scientist, no offence, might invent it again at some point, and when that day comes, we'll need the antidote on file. But you can't mention it again now unless cleared. Mum. Roger that. Right. That's enough shop talk, truly. Although some things do still need ironing out, Doctor. Such as attitude, protocol... Are you serious? ...and subordination. But it can wait until tomorrow. No, sadly, ma'am, tomorrow you have a full day of back-to-back -back meetings. Uh, all the ones you cancelled today on top, so... Uh, this training session you propose, no, it will not be possible. A national tragedy. You don't sound very sad about it, Sergeant. No? No. Oh, well, uh, perhaps the sadness it is uh, all on the inside. A professional front, you might say. Yeah. Look! <laughs> ah. Oh, dear. It's our lucky day and night. Drink up. We're going to the British Library. You too, Rix. The library? Let me guess. Man-eating books? Genetically enhanced librarians. Ooh, maybe I can erase my late fees. Give me strength. I could erase yours too, if you like. I don't have late fees, but I could have you court-martialed. You wouldn't. Actually, technically, you do you even know what the chain of command is? Just because it's not a molecular structure doesn't mean you can disregard it. Wow, good one. Two unstoppable forces. And I am stuck between them. Courage, Jean-Paul. Courage. been listening to Unit Brave New World, Time Flies by Alison Winter. Brigadier Winifred Bambera was played by Angela Bruce. Sergeant John Paul Saverin, Alex Jordan. Dr. Louise Ricks, Yemisi Owen Loye. Dr. Winston Grange, Silas Carson. Dr. Andrews, Simon Ludders. Sylvia Brooks, Simon Labib. And Eerie Six, George Watkins. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The script editor was Robert Valentine, director Scott Hancock, producer Emily Cook, and executive producers Nicholas Briggs and Jason Hay Gallery. Hello, I'm Alison Winter and I've written episode two of Brave New World called Time Flies. There's been an incident at the CSRF. The where? CSRF, Caverhurst Seed Bank and Research Facility. It's in Hampshire. Never heard of it. The inspiration for the story came from, I like transformation of things and I love non-linear things. So the idea that uh, butterflies could go backwards into caterpillars was disturbing and <laughs> I quite like disturbing things so uh, it came from there and 
to write for the brigadier, my brigadier from my childhood, um, was also very inspiring and I was very excited to be writing for Angela Bruce. Those hanging bright green things, they weren't there a moment ago. Chrysalises. No way, they've gone back into their cocoons. They're turning back into caterpillars, but that's the wrong way round. And now little eggs all over. And now, gone. I think, yeah, units set in the 90s is a dream come true because I was um, just a child when the show went into hiatus. And so I'm getting to imagine the things that I never got to see. Um, really excited for the fandom because I've seen murmurings across social media wondering if Big Finish would be bringing this character back. And knowing that they are and sniggering to myself in secrecy has been um, a real pleasure. And I think they're going to love it. I really do. I think the team dynamic is is just really fresh and exciting. Down there is the canteen, open 24-7. Coffee is uh, better than expected. Fish and chips on Fridays and... Uh... <laughs> It's all subsidized. The promised land. Pairing Bambera with Jean-Paul Savarine, played by the wonderful Alex Jordan, He's is just brilliant. a delight. And I think the moment I read that script, I said to you, Emily, I, I've worked with Alex loads, but he's so good with voices and accents, but also mm -hmm. speaks French. And I went, I really hope Alex is free. And I think I texted him that he, night, the moment yeah. I, I said to you, I'd like it to be him. And I just said to Alex, would you be free? If so, I'll chat to your agent. And he went, yep, absolutely. Just need to check a few things. And yeah. it's been a joy seeing them on day one collide and just yeah. form that bond. Oh, Alex is absolutely brilliant. When you uh, WhatsApp me to say, we, we, need, we need to get this guy. He's, he's brilliant. He's perfect. I went and listened to his voice for you and was blown away. And I just thought, yes. When he did the, because he does lots of different accents, doesn't mm. he? And when I heard the sample of the French accent, I just thought, yes. That's Savarine, that's Savarine, um, and thankfully he was free, and he's just been brilliant, as have everyone. And I think that's what is great about these early episodes in the set. We meet Savarine in episode one, um, and then by episode two, we meet the, the, the third member of their team. The scientific advisor, Dr. Louise Ricks, played by uh, Yemisi, yeah, yeah, who just stepped in and immediately had to find her feet with that pre-existing dynamic established. She slotted in very well. Mm. She was brilliant. Absolutely it's, it's funny to think it's only been three days in studio because already it feels like that team have been working together for years. Yeah, and oh, I feel like everyone always says this, like we had such fun, it was such a wonderful recording session, but it has just been a brilliant few days, hasn't mm. it? So much laughter and everyone's just been so professional but not taking themselves seriously at all. They're just having a good time and enjoying the work. Um, and and it, is a, it is a fun place to work. I was at the passport office this morning and it was so dull. And I just thought, oh, thank goodness I'm going to the sound house because there's actually fun happening there. Brigadier Bambera, made <laughs> by Angela Bruce. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Louise Ricks, played by Yemisi Oyin Louie. And Sergeant Jean-Paul Savarin, played by Alex Jordan. You're my scientific advisor, for Pete's sake. Are you expecting a twitchy little man with a clipboard? Glad to disappoint you. I was expecting a professional front. Not a soldier. I can see that. This is Sergeant Savreen, my second in command. Hi. Are you hurt, daughter? Nearly lost a leg kicking the panel out of that payphone. Thugs threw me off the premises. Hopefully now you're here, they'll have to let me back in. I do like her. She's a brilliant character. I like that she's sarcastic. I like that she um, she's a woman that knows exactly what she's doing and what she's capable of. And like her outward appearance doesn't matter like regarding that. So if anybody takes a swipe at her not looking professional enough or not behaving like a soldier, I quite like that she um, she doesn't care. Frankly, <laughs> um, I think she's a she's a nice pairing with Bambara as well. Um, like their relationship and exploring that has been really fun because yeah in that in this particular episode they're quite um antagonistic sometimes which is really really fun to play so she's a great character i think it's it just adds an extra element to the dynamic which is great from my perspective with Severin, where before it was i'm here to support um Bambara in any way and kind of provide assistance now it's i'm here to almost be a bit of a negotiator <laughs> and keep the peace uh whilst also providing the support so it adds an extra dimension to what whatever i've got going on in the scene which is really nice mm. she's insubordinate she's not respectable <laughs> for the chain of command 
I actually cannot believe someone of that... I don't know. I don't know why we let scientists into this episode. I really <laughs> there is a begrudging respect. I mean, in yeah. the end, it's, it's, it's lovely to work with a strong woman, but I'm going to have to actually lay the law down, tell her the rules of this, of this command, and, you know, made her buckle down. Yes, she has come through with flying colours, but I'm not going to let her know yet. Certainly not yet. Oh, scientists. Not sure why they join the unit if they're not going to respect the chain of command. A law unto themselves. May we? Oui. Anyone can be taught the chain of command. Scientific skill is very rare. Well, I love a trio in any kind of drama or um, show. I think I think you get the best sort of chemistry within three people rather than just two. And to introduce um, this character that was described to me as somebody rocky, somebody a bit Shirley Manson, again appealed to the 1990s teen in me, um, and to be able to throw a grenade into the middle of what was quite a pleasant relationship between Severin and Bambera was uh, a dream come true, a lot of fun. And I got to say a lot of things I wouldn't have the courage to say in reality via Luis. And it's been... A pleasure to write for this character and somebody who's unconventional and goes against <laughs> the, the authority. Always good. Controlled environment agriculture. Experiments needing precise temperatures, humidity, solar absorption, light, dark, radiation, so conditions can be reproduced exactly. Are the insects are real though? Yes, they will be. Well, they're all, they've got, all got their objective and they're all capable of working within their own fields very professionally mm. and actually as a unit together. I mean, I'm aware of that. I'm out of touch with all these things that this scientist, this wonderful person, Ricks, is bringing to this, this project. And it actually, I couldn't have come up with the solutions that she has and also that persistent to actually see it through. I mean, I'm not au fait with the computers in that way. And she has that technique, that talent that I need. Without admitting to it, she's that bit that I need. Saverin's certainly a supportive and he understands now how I work, but Rix has actually brought her, her knowledge to this team that's helped us defeat mm. the mm. danger Everyone that brings a different humanity. skill set. Yeah. yeah. Everyone brings a different skill set. You have uh, Bambra who brings sort of leadership, command, order, structure. You have Rix who brings smarts, brains, also brings challenge to the command which I think is sometimes needed to yeah. make the command not have a, sort of a total authority mm. um, and to kind of question themselves mm. uh, and then you have Saverin who is the like the get go get a job doer sort of the guy who's just like right you know we'll complete the task um, sort of not dog's body he's not dog's body but he's the guy mm. who's like right yep cool you just trust him with the task and he'll get it done so yeah safe pair of hands yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think at the very end it tells you that because she not only goes on the next the next challenge, but she says, Rix, you're in it too. So mm -hmm. she's basically mm. saying in that small two words, you're in. Mm. Yeah. They all suspect something. And when I got here this morning, some staff were in tears because they'd just seen a research student die. Amy Flynn, she was working on the same project. You know what happened to her? No, they couldn't put it into words. They had that look. What look? The one people get when they can't process what they've seen because it's incompatible with their reality. Something impossible, something terrible something otherworldly. This episode really focuses on a, a broken man who's a brilliant, brilliant scientist who's discovered something absolutely groundbreaking in the world of science. However, it's not strictly ethical, so he's been working in private and in secrecy, and it came from his desire to save his wife's life. She was dying of cancer. And after she passed away and he hadn't quite got the cure, he continued. He didn't have anything else to focus on. So this um, situation has come about where he's a mad scientist, but I was very keen to make him not a mad scientist, more of a, a human being who has just become fixated on something and can't let it go. And it goes badly wrong. I do believe that's a youthful glow I'm seeing. Oh, I, I need... Your skin, wrinkles just rippling away. You've never looked better. I'm Silas Carson, and I'm playing the wonderful Dr. Grange. 
Uh, what I love about Dr. Grange is that, uh, I mean, he is ostensibly the baddie, but he's sort of the baddie by mistake. You know, he is one of those uh, wonderful old people who, um, who has very, very good intentions, but his intentions get skewed by what happens. And so um, he ends up being the sort of reluctant evil character of, of, the, of the script, you know. So it's a very nuanced part. I love that. Well, it's not safe in here. You should leave. The test control is downstairs, throwing fire around my facility. I'm not leaving it like this. These creatures won't bother you if you ignore them. I love these weird and wonderful stories. There, there is always, um, there is always a kind of contained message in in these scripts. And what I really like about this is uh, the contained message of playing around with science and you know having kind of great intentions to um, to change the world for the better that can run out of hand as it as it were it's like a zoo a flower zoo this is a lot of flowers i think these caterpillars want to get to the flowers they certainly seem keen i've got one on my boot oh get off why are they so frisky i guess it's at this time in the 90s where mm. technology is just expanding and it's blowing up and we're seeing like a huge technological revolution um, and it, it is that fear that I guess comes with that sort of uh, technology which just come you know sort of not long ago off the back of sort of Cold War and stuff mm -hmm. like that all those fears are around so the idea of what we can do with sort of science and chemicals and things like that and how we can create sort of almost um, you know sort of the next stage of sort of oh, like well, biological warfare and stuff like that kind of deals with those topics which I really like yeah and it starts off with good intentions as well like his intentions were to help cure cancer so mm. it's fascinating how quickly that can change and how quickly like you know he loses his wife and then you know that that can morph into actually I've created something that could end life on the mm. planet like mm. it, you know it's a very human a human story because that is a very human error mm. well that's like the Marie Curie mm. uh, discovery isn't it it's the thing mm. that could end end humanity mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that nothing worse than actually nature turning on you yeah. Mm. So if they get out, they could enter the food chain. Birds, bats, mice. Cats. Mum. What? Uh, the critters. Uh, they followed us. They're rolling together. Rolling swarms. They move much faster in a pack. But we have to assume these caterpillars have all fed on that nectar. Don't let them touch you. I personally love bugs. What? Yeah. I love them. Yeah. I love I them. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I have no problem. I love, you know, I, in my room, I feel spiders belong. They actually, <laughs> oh. they tidy up the room. They take all true. the to flies be fair, and they, things out. They do out. tidy up the room. So, I'm, you I'm know, the big disagree. ones, yeah, I literally I say, get on with it. There used to be a time when I was with someone and if I saw a spider, I'd go, ah! And then I left that person and I realized, who's going to move this? So actually, it's absolutely <laughs> fine. You can stay there. The only thing I'm not, I don't like cockroaches. But here's yeah, the thing, here's what like I find interesting. Centipedes. I feel as though cockroaches are almost such an American thing, because you hear it's like Hollywood TV shows and it's always, you've got cockroach. I don't think I've ever really seen a cockroach over here. I've seen I little oh, really? I hate them. I've I've got, never yeah, I don't, I don't really like cockroaches. I've never seen a cockroach here in the UK. Yeah, yeah. No, Weird. when you. Yeah. I've seen cockroaches in the US, but no. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of. Oh, no! Ah, I'm thinking of Sri Lanka. Yes, mm. cockroaches. Do you know what? Yes, cockroaches true. actually. So and I say Australia. I love bugs, but yeah, cockroaches. I think there's something terrifying about their resilience. Yes, yes. You're just it. like it's, it's horrendous. It's, well, weren't yeah. we? Weren't we told yeah. at some stage they would they survive, can survive a nuclear, nuclear war? Yeah. And that I don't know. If somebody's planted it in your mind, and you look at them with that. Why would you think of? I that? I want to find this you? out now. I want to find out if that is like an urban myth that everyone's because everyone knows this. Everyone's like, would oh yes, cockroaches yeah. can survive. A, but really, can they? I don't, we I'm don't gonna know. Go, I'm going to go and search this. We can oh, good. Google it. Thank you.